Thor, God of Thunder, The Last Days of Midgard. Epilogue This was once a quiet little town called Broxton. But then, a sickness came to this place. A danger that could not be stopped. And that danger's name was Asgard. Look around you, ladies and gentlemen. This is what happens when we allow gods to walk the earth. Dario Ayer, CEO of Roxon Energy Corporation. Mr. Ager, what was... No questions, please. I'm afraid I'm still recovering from this entire trying ordeal. And besides, now is not the time for questions, but for answers. I'm told the town's attackers were trolls, vile creatures. I barely escaped their clutches myself. Some of my legal team were not so lucky. God rest their souls. As you can see, the trolls laid waste to the entire area, including Roxon's recent endeavors here. And just when we had this town on the verge of a full financial recovery, such a tragedy. And what were trolls doing in Oklahoma, you may ask? Why would they attack one of the quietest, most peaceful towns you could ever imagine? Why indeed? It's our fault. I suppose, for allowing a city of self-described deities to hover unregulated in the skies above the American heartland. Trolls and ogres may be a normal part of their lives, but they shouldn't be of ours. That's why something must be done, ladies and gentlemen, before this happens to your hometown. These so-called Gods aren't my god, and I don't think they're yours. So if you ask me, it's about time these Asgardians went back to wherever they came from. Asgardia. I can hear shouting, Jennifer. I suppose that's not a good sign. Always depends on who's doing the shouting, but this time... No, no, it's definitely not good. I did get Roxanne's injunctions against Thor lifted, so there's that, but that's not your biggest problem, Agent Solomon. Have you seen the news? Jennifer Walters, also known as She-Hulk, Gamma Irradiated, Attorney at Law. Whatever line Roxanne is feeding people, it's working. There's already talk in Congress of revoking Asgardia's embassy status. We can fight this, Ross. I have the names of some good PR people and some lobbying firms. But if I know Thor, this isn't the kind of fight he's built for. You're his girlfriend, Agent Solomon. I'm sure he listens to you. If you want my advice, this is one fight you should probably talk him out of. I am... Not his girlfriend. Are you sure? Because I could have sworn that Tony told me. Thanks, Ms. Hulk. Hanging up now. Um, hello? Is it all right if I park here? The eyes of Heimdall see all, Lady Solomon, of S.H.I.E.L.D. Your flying chariot will be safe in Asgardia. You have my solemn vow. Okay, cool. Not sure if I should tip you now or... I'm looking for Thor. At the moment, you do not need eyes as sharp as mine in order to find the God of Thunder. 
Simply try following your ears. So, I guess he's seen the news. Is the indoor thunder really necessary, Thor? It is for me, all mother. If I could hear what was being said inside that chamber, I fear for what I might do. Have they voted already, or is there still a chance the fools might see reason? The Congress of Worlds are hardly fools, my son. And I'm afraid at this point their decision is a foregone conclusion. How is this possible? How has Roxon bewitched even the minds of the gods? Roxon may be masters of lies, but there is still some truth in what they say. We are a danger to these people. For a time, our presence here on Midgard was worth the risk. We needed that time to rebuild, to renew our strength and our sacred bond with this realm. But that time has since passed. There is growing unrest in the Nine Realms, as you have seen. Malekith and his dark elves continue to scheme from their swamps in Spartelheim, and every day there are more worrisome rumbles from the land of the Frost Giants. Some even claim they've seen the war bonfires of Muspelheim burning once again. Whatever is coming for us, my son, we must face it out there, out where we belong. I never thought I would see the day when Asgard would bow to villains such as Roxxon. If my father were here, if your father were here, his all-mother would tell him what she is telling you now. It has been decided. Asgardia is leaving. Gaia will remain on Midgard as befits the Earth Mother, while Idun has been sent ahead to scout for new homes along the world tree. I am now the one true All-Mother, and as your All-Mother, I command you to do your princely duty, or I will find someone else who can carry that hammer. But as your mother, as the woman who raised you, know that I understand your pain. This does not mean we are abandoning the people of Midgard. I would never ask such a thing of you. But if there is one lesson that every mother must learn, it is that sometimes... We must let go of the things we love the most. Wow, this place makes the helicarrier look like my first apartment. Agent Solomon of S.H.I.E.L.D., I presume? Oh, Mother Freya, uh, forgive me, but I... I, I never quite learn how to curtsy. Oh, it doesn't take much to fall in love with my son. Everyone who meets Thor falls in love with him. But it takes a special kind of courage to be loved by him. To stand strong in the eye of that storm. May you be blessed with courage, Rosalind Solomon. Okay... Thanks. Met your mom. She seems nice. You haven't maybe been telling people that I'm your girlfriend, have you? Thor? Roxxon has won. Dario Agar is a murderous monster who consorts with trolls and yet walks free. 
And now, even the Congress of Worlds has bent to his will. It has been decided. Asgardia must go. You're leaving Earth? I... But what about Broxton? The first time I remember laying eyes upon Midgard, the people still lived in caves and fought one another with stones and sticks. In those days I came here only to make war and revelry, to be worshipped and feared, and above all else, to destroy. The world and its people have changed so much since then. Have I? All I know is you won't find the answer up here. People of Broxton, I know this is a time of great hardship for you all, but the gods of Asgard would humbly ask of thee a favor. May we please be of assistance. Buildings, that's all they were. We're burying buildings here today, or not people. I want you to remember that. These were more than mere buildings, Jane Foster. Over there was once Joe's Motel and Fritchman's Country Kitchen. Across the street stood Sankovich's Shop and Go and Bill's Diner. When I brought Asgard to this land, there was life here and strength. Now, as Asgard leaves, there is nothing. I did this. Gods, help me. I am not worthy of this world. For when Asgard leaves, please tell me you're not going with it. Leave Midgard? No, no, that I could never do, though I was hoping that you might. What? It is more important than ever that someone speak for Midgard in the Congress of Worlds, and I know of no finer candidate. Or that is quite the honor, but I don't know that I'm qualified to. Show me someone on this planet who knows more about dealing with Asgardians, and the job is theirs. But I have cancer. I have treatments. We have a rainbow bridge that will take you anywhere in the cosmos you need to go. If this is you trying to use magic to cure my condition, we talked about that. I respect your wishes, Jane Foster, as will all of Asgard. You will be an honored guest in the realm eternal. If you so desire, you may even bring this boyfriend of yours. I'm sure we can find him suitable work, perhaps in the stables. Actually, I broke up with Walter a few weeks ago. Nice guy, but uh, I suppose having cancer is good for helping you put things into perspective. Sometimes I guess it's best to just move on. Thor. Are you hearing me? I fare thee well, Walter, seller of real estate. Fare thee well, Broxton. Mr. Agger. Nothing further, people. I believe my work here is done. Yeah, but guess what? Mine isn't. I just wanted you to know this isn't over. I will prove what you did here and nail your bullheaded butt to the wall for it. You got my word on that. And you have my word, Agent Solomon, that I will sue you into oblivion for this assault. Great idea. Too bad you murdered all your lawyers. See ya around, Dario. Where's Thor? Not here, I'm afraid, my liege. 
I saw him flying up to Asgardia moments ago. Perhaps the prince could not bear to witness this final farewell. Nevertheless, the time for farewells has come. Good people of Midgard, today is a day of great cosmic providence. With heavy hearts, we, your friends immortal, must leave you now. The destiny of Asgard lies once more among the stars. But even though we may soon be worlds apart, know this, you, the lords and ladies of Broxton, shall always have gods in your service. So swears Freya, all mother of Asgard. But we leave you with more than simple promises. Please accept these gifts as a token of our eternal gratitude. Gold from the treasures of Asgard, enchanted fruit trees that will bloom for a thousand years, a fountain that will never run dry. May the light of the Bifrost shine forever in your skies as a reminder of the sacred bond our worlds share. Until the end of time, the eyes of Asgard will be ever upon thee. Are they really leaving, Mommy? They didn't fix the town. Shh, honey. But where will we go? This was our home. Aye, little one. And may it always be so. People of Broxton, I cannot give you back what you have lost. But may this serve as a small token of the debt that you are owed by Thor and all the gods. Go inside, little one, and choose your room. You mean I get to live in that? If you so wish, yes. I so wish, I so wish. Did Thor just tear off a chunk of his guardian and give it away? Can he do that? That is Bill Skirnia, greatest of all the halls in Asgard. Okay, so whose castle was that? Who do you think, Agent Solomon? It was Thor's. And so the gods of Asgard return once more to the heavens, though far less alone than when first they arrived. I will not lie to you, Jane Foster. We have much work to do. I wouldn't have it any other way, Your Majesty. So, what do you think of the new girlfriend? Just as the Earth itself would never be alone. I am going to drink vast amounts of mead this evening, and then I suppose I must find a new place to sleep. I could have said, you're taking this all rather well, considering your home just disappeared into the clouds. I, Asgard, will always be my home. But as my mother has taught me, so long as there was thunder in the sky, sometimes we must let go of the things we love. Come, Agent Solomon, need is calling. on Island. I made war with a god this week and leveled an entire town just to spite him. Can you imagine how that makes me feel? Like a troll? Bored. Roxxon cannot be stopped by man or deity. We will ruin this world. We will defile it and leave it dead in a ditch. And then what? We move into space, I suppose. We've already begun mining on Mars and the moons of Jupiter. 
but something about it still seems so tame. Where do your kind come from, Ulick? I was born in the caves beneath Nornheim, in the realm of Asgard, back when Asgard was still a world unto itself. Since then, the trolls have scattered to the wind. These days you'll find us in the bedrock beneath most all the nine realms. Nine realms. Tell me, good king of the trolls, tell me more about these other realms and who I might need to kill in order to have them. The Far Future, New Midgard. We forged another river, Grandfather. What would you like to name this one? Roz. Roz, Jane, Steve. What kinds of names are those for rivers? The unforgettable kind. Come, grandchildren. We have much work to do. We have an entire world to regrow. Epilogue. Elsewhere, at the end of time, the planet once known as Mars. Another dead world. But not the one I desired. Merely the one that the great lord of Asgard gave me leave to consume gave me leave. The arrogance of that god. If it wasn't for that damn black weapon of his, I would have throttled him and his precious earth. At least the blasted weapon was destroyed, so that the next time we meet, he will have no chance to... to... what... what is this? What has... <laughs> and so is born the Butcher of Worlds. And so begins a story for another day.